So this will be the last part to painting a blue roan. Um, as you can see here, originally she was just blue roan color, um, but I added some paint markings to her. Now you don't have to do this, I just did it just because I wanted to. Um, but now we're actually going to go ahead and start finishing up some of the details on her, like her mane. Um, we're going to do the roaning on her. So, yeah. Okay, so there's two ways that we can actually do roaning. We can use an airbrush and we can do a light misting to give that kind of misty look that Peter Stone and some of the briars have. We can do it by toothbrush. Where we take a toothbrush and put the paint on it and kind of flick it around. Um, but I don't like that method just because it does not look as realistic as what I want. Or we could do the painted on method, which I prefer. So, a couple of things you're going to need is, of course, a pan for paint. You're going to need white acrylic paint. And you're also going to need some. Is. You're going to need some glazing medium, uh, also known as gesso. Uh, this one is on the glossy side, and um, you mix it with acrylics, and it becomes more transparent. Um, but this, I got at the local art store here. You can buy this at Walmart, I've seen it. Um, the only thing is, is it's not glossy. You don't have to have it glossy, but I prefer the glossy look better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna yeah, pull the lid off, um, and we're just gonna put a little bit of this glossy medium on our pan, as if I can get it out. There we go. Okay. So that's it right there. It looks like almost white, but it isn't. It's clear once you start mixing it. Um, you're going to get your white acrylic paint. You're just going to put some right next to it. You don't need a whole lot um, because the glossing medium will uh, dry out relatively fast. So you need to make sure that um, you don't put a whole lot there because, you know, it will take time. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take some of your glossing medium and put it over to the side, take a little bit of the acrylics and start mixing it. Okay? And you only want about a, like a little brush full. You don't need to glob it in there. Um, and then the next test that I used to do, because I know the consistency now, is I used to get a piece of black paper and I used to test to see what the consistency was on that black piece of paper um, to tell if I needed to add a little bit more gloss to it to get it a little bit thinner so it's not so prominent of the hairs or if I needed it a little bit more. But once you get the look and the feel of it, you won't need to worry about it. You can add a little bit of water as well to help keep it from drying out, just like a tad bit. So now that I have um, my glossing medium mixed up here, I'm using a brush. It's kind of old. It's got frilly ends to it. And this is how we get the look. I have used a fan brush before, something like this. Uh, this does work occasionally, but I like to actually use a brush that's older and has its ends frail. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our model and we're going to come up, uh, let me see how many of this, uh, okay. let's go this way. So what we're going to do is we need to make sure we're also going with the hair. So. The hair goes down the neck, goes down the shoulder, it goes down this way, kind of folds over here like this. The hairs come up, um, you know, on the legs, down the legs and stuff, but the hairs are going up this way, kind of. So it gives like this weird little look when you look at a horse's hair. Um, you could look at some YouTube or uh, Google pictures for horse's hair and you should be able to see it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start brushing this on here and you want to be very light about it you don't need a whole lot of paint because we want to make sure that we actually are seeing the hairs so I don't know if you can see it or not but you could just see a slight look of hairs right there and then of course you know if you're not satisfied later on 
can always bring darker areas back. And you can also turn the brush around as well, just depending on what you more want it to do. And another method that people do is the pencil method. I just thought of that. Um, it's where you draw on every single individual hair. Um, and uh, it's, it's a pretty fun method, but it takes for ever. Okay, so here you can probably see that better now, but you can see the hairs on her neck, okay? Um, and of course, you know, to do this to the whole body, it does take some time. And then you need to remember that every part that you do, you need to make sure that you do go and spray your horse because this stuff will rub off if you don't. Um, and then of course, you know, when you're doing other parts, you're going to have to put your hand in some areas to stabilize your hand. And of course that, you know, necessarily doesn't work out all the time just because you will be touching paint and you may rub it off in some other place where you painted it. So I always recommend spraying it after you're done in one area. Now, especially if you're a beginner at this, um, I would recommend doing this on maybe a horse that's not necessarily important to you. You can do this on an original finished horse to get the feel of it, especially with the consistency of paint, because um, I am constantly changing the consistency of my paint to adapt to how dark or light I want to go in a certain area. So it's best to practice just so you know um, how thick you want your paint. And uh, you can do that on a black piece of paper too, but of course, you know, when, when you're on a model, um, it will feel a little bit different and uh, you just need to adjust accordingly. Okay, so there you can see I have some hairs going on, and you want to make sure that you do go all the way up to the hair lines of the horse and stuff like that. But you can see that's how I start, and I will do this all over the body where it needs to be. Um, and of course, you know that will take some time to do, so we're going to um, go ahead and skip this part here, I'm going to finish this up later on this horse. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go and start finishing up her mane and tail and stuff. Um, because I'm on the sake of uh, the camera, so I want to get, it, get this video done with. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start working on her mane and tail now. Um, so of course we're going to need acrylic paints for that as well. Um, black and white, don't need any other color, well you could if you wanted to, um, but uh, yeah, so black and white, um, and let me see here, I know I have, oh, so what we're going to go ahead and do now, oh, it is solid, okay, there we go. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and squirt out some black 
paint. And we're going to need a new brush, of course. And we're going to start working on her mane. So, I have technically already worked out where her black needs to be and her white needs to be. Um, so, with her, um, this would be the black area here because there's no white markings touching it. Now, you can have white, mane, um, slightly in areas that may be darker because you never know what underlying colors there could be there, but most of the time where there's white markings, there's going to be white mane. If there's a darker color such as her black here, this should all be black up to here. And her forelock should be white as well. Okay? Um, so before I start this, gather up your supplies and we're going to continue on in the next video.